I'm Kevin Solway and today I'll be examining some of the teachings of Zen Buddhism. Uh, before I start, I'd like to make very clear that my criticisms of modern Zen teachings don't necessarily have any reflection on the teachings of the Buddha or on uh, any wise people that um, may have existed in the past, um, such as Hakuin, who may have identified as Zen teachers. Uh, this video is purely about the teachers of today, uh, here and now. I previously dealt with the view of consciousness and rebirth that's found in mainstream Theravadan and Tibetan Buddhism, uh, but now it's the turn of Zen. Unlike the uh, other schools of Buddhism, Zen Buddhists generally don't get involved in any kind of philosophical reasoning. Um, I think it's because reasoning is difficult and it's so easy to make mistakes. However, sometimes they um, have a go at it, such as in this example. Zen Buddhism is not a materialist doctrine. It does not hold that um, mind or consciousness is an epiphenomenon of of the brain, or that it is an emergent property of the brain, or that it is grounded in the material world. So, same old story. The mind is independent of the material world. So it doesn't matter if we eat poison for food, or if we're run over by a bus, uh, since it's not going to have any effect whatsoever on the mind. The material world is inherently messy. Every moment that passes, things are dying in painful, messy and often unpredictable ways. I believe this is why modern Buddhists want to divorce themselves from the material world. And in its place, they've constructed a fantasy world, where the mind is independent of the physical world, where everything works according to plan, and the pattern of your consciousness is guaranteed to continue even though nature might want to crush it to a pulp. Just as Christians generally start off first with a creator God and don't ask any questions as to how that God got there, many Buddhists start off with consciousness and don't ask how it got there. We start off first with consciousness. Consciousness is primary because we can't know anything except for consciousness. We can't know anything except for consciousness. That's uh, actually not true. Reasoning tells us that consciousness must have a cause. So reasoning points to something that is a cause of consciousness. In this way, we can indeed know something other than consciousness. Karmic activity, that is, willful intention on our part, um, causes the consciousness to continue in a single stream. He said, willful intention causes the consciousness to continue in a single stream. Shakespeare's Hamlet says, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. If nature has determined that your consciousness will come to an end in any recognisable pattern, as though vaporised, or alternatively that the stream of your consciousness will split into a thousand divergent streamlets, then nothing is going to stop that from happening. Your consciousness is only a very small part of the whole picture. Moving on to our next example. If you've ever seen politicians being asked questions by journalists, you'll have noticed that they almost never answer the question that's asked of them, but instead give an answer that suits themselves uh, about an entirely different subject. One sees exactly the same thing with Buddhist teachers everywhere. If a Buddhist teacher actually answers a question that's asked, 
It's usually only by accident uh, because the teacher didn't understand the question. Naturally enough, Zen teachers often get asked about reincarnation. Does the Zen master believe that consciousness continues intact into another life? So here's the secret about uh, reincarnation. There's no past and there's no future. The past and the future do not exist. So that's the secret of reincarnation. Reincarnation means wake up just now. Great. So when asked, Zen Master, what would you like for dinner? Would you like soup or rice or are you not hungry? He'll answer, here's the truth about dinner. The past and the future do not exist. Dinner means wake up just now. What a load of baloney. So we've already heard the truth about reincarnation. Uh, here's another Zen master with the truth about reincarnation. Do you know where you're coming back after you die? No. No. So that's the truth about reincarnation. So, the truth about reincarnation, according to her, is that we don't know where we'll be coming back after we die. Well, that's very diplomatic, I must say. Uh, it certainly creates a lot fewer enemies than saying that you don't believe it. Uh, this don't know mind is something that's cultivated by a lot of Zen people. Uh, unfortunately, while there are a lot of things we genuinely can't ever know, Zen people don't know a lot of things that can be known and which they would do well to know. They use the phrase don't know as an escape clause or a get out of jail free card to avoid answering diff difficult questions that require a thoughtful answer. Here's another example. There's an old story where somebody goes up to a Zen master and says, do we, do we, is there life after death? And the Zen master says, I don't know. And the guy says, what do you mean? You're a Zen master. You're, you're an enlightened master. How can you not know uh, whether there's life after death? And the Zen master says, I'm not a dead Zen master. That was an unhelpful answer. Since you can't know anything when you're dead. You can only know things when you're alive. And despite the fact that the Zen master was indeed alive when he gave his answer, he still didn't know. It's a cop-out. There's a lot more that can be said on the subject of uh, rebirth or reincarnation. I personally think that the Buddha's teaching of rebirth has nothing whatsoever to do with physical birth and death. The Buddha was a philosopher, not a scientist. The subject of physical birth and death, and whether or not a particular individual has the consciousness of another person who died, uh, are questions for the scientists. The only birth we should be concerned with is the birth of the ego, which happens every moment that the ego exists in us. The only rebirth that wise people escape is the rebirth of ego, or delusion. They don't escape physical life, and nor do they escape physical death. When people ask me uh, what happens after physical death, I sometimes say, what happens to a candle flame when it's snuffed out. 